Hey guys, I'm Jess Dammers from Board Game Geek TV and I'm here with David Auslos and he is going to show us Panic Station, which interesting enough he just told me that he uh, did the artwork for this as well as designed it. So that's pretty cool, I think. Let's see which camera are we on. This one? This one? So there you can see the, the cover for that. It's really, really kind of neat. Um, so go ahead, start us off. Okay, Panic Station. Um, well, actually, if you're a little bit of a sci-fi buff like me and a child of the 80s, you will know the John Carpenter classic movie, The Thing. I mean, it's one of those very classic, classic uh, thriller movies uh, about an isolated group of uh, explorers in an isolated station and an alien life form that slowly takes over each character. And so basically what I try to do with this game is kind of transfer that idea of uncertainty, not knowing who to trust, into a board game form. So basically how the game works is that you have this station that will slowly build in a modular way on the board. So each time you play the game again and again, you will have a totally different station and totally different situations. So that gives you a high replayability. Now the, the first tile that is put on the table, I have to say card, but it's like a tile. So yeah. Is uh, the reactor room. That is the starting point. And players start with two characters. That's kind of unique to the game that you control two characters right. instead of one. Yeah. And so these characters are represented on the board with these tokens. So that is your basic setup for the characters. You can see uh, an android and a trooper. And the trooper is kind of like the, the tough guy holding a big flamethrower. And his mission in the game is to destroy this hive. So at one point in the game, towards the end of the game, the infested hive will be placed in one of the locations. And your mission is to reach with your trooper the hive and to destroy it. Okay. And to destroy it, you have to fill your flamethrower with three gas clean cards. So if you, at the end of the game, can play these three gas king cards, you have destroyed the hive, nice. and you have tried victory That's for the That's the only way to destroy the hive. That's the only way to destroy the okay. hive. So, basically, in your turn, you have a, a pool of action points. I have to say pool because your action points are determined by those two characters. And you can spend them the way you like. So, you can spend them on one character or on two, any combination. So when the game develops and your characters get hurt through uh, warfare with parasites and other players, you have to turn, rotate your cards to three health, two health, one health. And while your health level drops, your action points drop. So you start the game with two action points per character, but while it drops, it can go to one. And finally, when you're out of the game, you're wiped out. So it's very important to learn to manage these two characters and keep them alive you as long as possible. just need one to be alive. So you, well, both, because both they both have a unique function in the game. So this person is the only character that can destroy the hive. Okay. But this is the character that starts the game with weapons to defend the, uh, oh. the rest of the team. So you have a very good reason to keep the android alive because he's the only one with a sort of a defense against the first parasites attack that will take place in the station. Okay. So in your turn, you will start, like I said, in the center of the station. And so there will be no other cars, cards on the table. And in your turn, using those four combined action points, you can do a few things. You can move to a different location, perform some of the functions in the room. So each room has different functions. You have a room where there's a sort of storage room where you can find lots of items. You have a, a cooperative search room where you can join in with many team members to find more items. So that forces you to work together to get an optimal set of items, equipment to survive. We have rooms that trigger parasites because these mean nasties will enter the station. And at the beginning of the first part of the, of the turn, they will move around. Oh gosh. And 
that is they simply will, they, will they will hurt you badly. So you simply roll the die, and the number that you get here, the four, is the direction on the navigator. So basically, every parasite in play will move at that time into this direction. So if it lands in a, in a place, in a location with characters, it will immediately attack. So it's very deterministic. It's like that, no That's rolled to, at the beginning of the... That's rolled at the beginning okay. of the turn. So after this, this parasite phase, you can react as a team and start moving around. And like I said, you can move, you can do functions in rooms. But the main thing is that while you first explorations in the building and you will explore by taking always a top card from the exploration deck and try to fit the card, it's like a little bit of a tile laying game, in a right orientation, always straight like this, and try to find a way to find an exit. But sometimes, like here in this situation, you'll see that there is no exit, right. so you are forced as a trooper or as an android to move to a different location to extend the station. So it's a little bit sometimes tricky because you have to move to very dangerous situations right. in order to find a hive, you know? So what, what happens if you move into a room that has a parasite in it? Then it will only react during the parasite phase. Okay. So you have time during your phase to react to it, probably destroy it if you can. Okay. And then only after the parasite phase is again triggered, it will attack and try to eliminate you. You always do the parasite phase first, move the parasites and attack, and after that everybody will get its turn. And then you have a new parasite phase, and after that you have a team phase, uh, wherein everybody can do his own, uh, his own turn. Okay. So that's, that's, that's how the gameplay uh, goes. Now, during the first turns, people will, of course, perform searches in rooms. And to perform a search in room, to gather equipment, you simply turn over the card to mark it as a red icon. Okay. And that means that the green room just has become more dangerous. Because the second time you will search in such a room, you will have to trigger a parasite that will enter the surrounding area. So, so that's what you get for not finding everything the first absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> so now, during those first searches, one of the players will eventually take this card from the That doesn't look good. And that is the no good card. That is the no as good card. As soon as you draw this card, you are supposed to be the host. Uh-oh. Basically, that means that you are infected by one of the parasites in the building, and from then on, you will do everything to stop the team to destroy the hive. And nobody obviously knows. Nobody obviously knows, because it's all hidden information, so it's like, from then on, you know, those during those first two turns, the only certainty that you have is there will be a host, and it will be any of the people at the table. Now, what is the main mechanic of the game? And this is the, the tension part, you know, that's where the, right. the juices Who get flowing it? and the tensions get, get really, really hefty. And is that people will, 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 will keep on sweating. Or yeah, we'll yes, sweating. Uh, anchor sheaves <laughs> are very important in this game. So basically, Let's say I'm, I'm in this room, and there's another player here, and another player here. Basically now, I can move to this location, but when you move to a new location with already characters in the same space, you are forced to do a trade. So you have to trade an item in one direction, and the other person has to trade an item back. Now, you start a game, with a very specific set of cards, being infection cards. Everybody starts with three infection cards, all this plain color. It's very important. The color coding tells you those are your own infection cards. Now, at the beginning of the game, when you're not infected and you're innocent, you can do nothing with these cards. They are neutral cards that you keep in your hand hidden. Now, as soon as I draw the host cards, I can put these babies in action. <laughs> so what I'm basically going to do is, when I'm doing a trade, for example, I'm doing a trade with the green player. So the green player is in the building, I'm entering the location, and I put one of the cards face down on the table. So now I can do two things because I'm the host. So I first have to gain a little bit trust, you know, because if I immediately try to infect them and it fails, then I'm, you know, I'm 
whacked. Yeah. So and then, then I know I know he's dosed, but I'm not infected, so I'm still I'm on the other side. He's yet. a little bit can, now paranoia at this point. Can yeah. you inform the other players, or would that be meta gaming? Sorry? Would, could you inform the other players? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But yeah. but it's it's my word versus him, his word, and it, it's oh, up to the other okay. players. Who it's a trust. little bit of a manipulation. So you could be I like, think. I don't know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like he's infected. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and sometimes it's. I mean, somebody's wearing a yellow T-shirt must Obviously. be infected, you know. So it's very basic. Now, basically, what you do is you put it face down on the table. We switch cards. We look at them, put them on hand, don't show it to the rest of the table, and then we know what happened. So, what I did now was, I played an innocent card, because I have to gain his trust. But, he doesn't trust me, because what he did was play one of those valuable gas can cards. And this is the whole balance thing of the game. The only way to stop an infection, let's say I play this card to him, an infection card instead of the innocent card, I played it to him, he gave me a card back, and he played an innocent card back. Now, now he's in trouble, because he didn't stop the infection with a gas can, and now he's infected himself. So, so now, uh, what I'm happens is, yeah, you get an exponential traitor system, where slowly everybody on the table will get infected. And the only way to stop it is playing these gas can cards. But you have to be very careful not to play too many of them, because when you lose them, you can't win the game by destroying the hive. You see? Oh, wow. yeah. you, so you it's need, like you need the gas cans to, to win the game when you're on the human side. So the host will also try to he will try to collect all those gas can cars so uh, the humans can't can win the game anymore. Now we're in luck because we have some tools to deduct who's bad and who's good. So this is a major part of the checkup to see what's happening in the station. Now this is a tool, this is the heat scanner. Right. And what I didn't tell you is that you start the game with these two cards. You have a, a positive and a negative uh -oh. card. So basically, when at one point somebody in the station is entering, and I have to find one of these terminal cards, these terminals rooms, they have very cool uh, functions. You can open up rooms in different locations and, and actually perform a heat scan. And a heat scan is conducted when somebody enters the location and determines that he's going to do the heat scan action. And from that point, everybody is going to play one of these cards in truth, so you can't lie. So for example, if I'm infected, I have to play the red card and I have to place it in the place for left everyone field. to see. Yeah, you no, no, place it face you down. place it face down. Okay. I'm only showing it for you. So. And your remaining card you play here. And what is happening is these get shuffled and then these cards are played out openly on the table. So everybody oh will see how many infectors are at that point active in the game. But so you, you still don't know who and, and you, you only know how many. And you mind I would be freaked out if they, if they looked like this. I mean, that happens a lot by the Does end of the game. Does this happen a lot? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. even, even <laughs> another red one. So, uh, yeah. so it can get pretty... As soon as two people get infected, it can go very fast. So you have to play very fast to get that hive on the table or you're, you know, dead meat. So, uh, so you're working together with each other to destroy the hive. But uh, 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 when during a heat scan, it turns out that three uh, of the players have been infected and there's only one human left, and you find out, oh my god, I'm the only one who... Uh, that, that's, that's, that, that really gives you a lot of tension. And... Huh. So you, you have to play, like, you would have to play your card too. If you're doing the scan, you have to play your positive or negative card? Yes. Well, you, but yeah. as, as an infected, you, would, you wouldn't you would need to scan because you know because you've been infecting people, I guess. Yeah, but you play but the game along, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, the thing is that it can sometimes be so complex in certain situations that two infectors don't know from each other that they are infected. So you get these very hilarious situations where two infectors try to infect each other oh, yeah. because they didn't know the original infector. So, I mean, uh, it can be very, you know, uh, fascinating. Each session has a totally different situation and 
Of course, uh, the, the totally changing ground plan is a very major part of the strategies. You know, uh, you can have a very long stretched station, right. a very uh, circular shaped uh, station, and it, you know, of course, there's different strategies. Uh, and then, how do the, the tiles get added to the to the layout? You know, it's it's very simple actually. So, from starting from that first tile, um, you always have to do an orientation so that two open doors lock into each other. Okay. So you have different possibilities here. You can lay it so, you can you just rotate a card or put it this way. But you may not do this. Something like this is, is forbidden. So it has to be in this direction okay. and two uh, doors have to be connected. Uh, connected. But you also have, for example, lock doors. Now these doors work just the same way, but these need a key card in at in the item deck to open up. So no basically, a... some of the item cards, and I'm going to show you some, have these uh, markings on them. So this is like a scope. So that is some, an add-on on your standard weapon of a uh, Android. So by having these cards laid out openly on the table, which is dangerous because everybody on the table can see that you have this card in possession, you upgrade the weapon and you can shoot one room further because one thing I didn't explain is there is not only the gas can that can save you from infection, but if I'm entering a room and I'm pretty sure the purple player is the bad guy or is infected, there is only one way to stop me from being forced to trade and it is to attack him. So if I perform an attack on him, I don't have to trade and I'm safe. But if he's the purple guy and he has some mean cards like the armor, he can play and defend cards and then my attack won't do a thing. So. And what can happen during this game is that uh, when you're playing this with uh, four, five or, or six players and, and uh, uh, you're playing the game and two people suddenly start to shoot at each other and the other players don't know what, ha what happens but they, they have some information about each other. They they know something about each other, but the other players don't know, don't really know what's going on. And that's that's some kind of paranoia thing situations that you can find in this uh, in this game. So this is a game that you you you, uh, you you don't only play it on the table, but you also play it in your head. And you have to mm -hmm. carefully watch the body language of uh, of the other players because you can you can find some information in there too. I mean, it's it's sometimes you have to really take a poker face, you know, when you get some yeah. infection yeah, card, everybody's like, watching you, you know, what's happening, oh. and yeah. you have yeah. to be very straight faced. So yeah. you can you kill your teammates if Absolutely. they're not? Absolutely, yeah. it's a very it, it, hardcore game. It's that you kill, sometimes. well, that you kill the ones that aren't infected? Do you can, Absolutely, yeah. I guess you wouldn't want to ask if they were infected because then that yeah. might ruin <laughs> what it. I mean, the game really blossoms with a communicative group. Right. So if you are used to, you know, social games where there's a lot of interaction and, you know, talking and, I mean, this game really pushes you into making accusations. I mean, it really works the best when you start really accusing each other and creating paranoia and, you know, if I'm the host, the best thing I can do is make everybody, you know, suspicious, you know, so there's so many strategies and it's like what Bart, Bart really captured is that it's not about what happens on the board, it's especially what happens in the minds of the right. people. And there can be really, you know, intense head games, and that is what makes the game unique, I think. Uh, and the, 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 the person that helps you out during a turn might shoot you down in this next turn. Suddenly, so. I, I just did a, a session where, you know, somebody was, you know, helping me the whole game, you know, defending against parasites, switching items, and in the final, final turn, when I wanted to, you know, place my character disc in the half, she infected me, you know, just, that is such an emotional moment, yeah, something like, why, you know, why? so, that's such a, no. a great, uh, I mean, that's why you play the game, for, to get those emotional moments, you know, right. of tension. And, Work together, but don't trust anyone, yeah. even your own family, don't trust them. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. It looks looks really good. So, well, thank you so much for showing this to us. It really appreciate it. It looks awesome. I, I really, I'll have to play around with, see how that turns out. Yeah. I get a little too paranoid, though. I think I would be like, ah, ah, giving stuff away. You can't be never too paranoid in this game. So. It's 
a little bit uh, strange to have a game on the fair that is actually not available. You know, it's like that was my dream to get a game at Essen, and now it's there and it's not there. So it's, it's, it's a little bit, yeah. a little bit uh, of a strange situation. Right